There are a lot of advantages to running Kali Linux in a virtual environment. Using virtualization, one physical computer can run multiple operating systems simultaneously. One box with lots of hard drive space and RAM can replace many individual computers in your forensics lab. You would normally install Kali in a new virtual machine, but having Kali distributed as a pre-built, pre-configured VM image saves you installation and configuration time. Kali running in a VM also has the same boot options that you need when performing your forensic examinations, including forensics mode. Virtual environments have the capability of creating snapshots of the running state of their VMs. This means that you can install tools and change configurations in Kali as you like. Make a baseline snapshot of the Kali VM and use the Kali VM to perform a forensic examination. When you have finished, Use the Revert to Snapshot feature to automatically restore your baseline Kali VM for your next examination. How convenient is that? Only one catch. To get the VM snapshotting capability, you will need to upgrade to VMware Workstation. VMware Player and Fusion are free for personal, non-commercial use. VMware Player Pro, Fusion Pro, and Workstation are commercial products that require a license purchase to use. If you are planning on using virtualization in a forensics or IT business, you should purchase VMware Workstation anyway. However, if you are a student or an educator, VMware offers generous educational discounts for many of their product licenses, so to be sure to take advantage of this opportunity and get into using virtualization. In this demo, we will see the steps for running Kali Linux as a virtual machine in VMware Player, which includes loading the Kali VM image into VMware Player, booting the Kali Linux VM, and selecting in which operating mode to run. We also will check if Kali has internet access. In this demo, I will be showing you how to install and run a pre-built virtual machine image containing Kali Linux 1.1.0 inside of VMware Player. If you have already downloaded the Kali VMware image and installed VMware Player, then you are ready to go. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, please watch my clip Downloading Kali Linux to learn about Kali VM image files and VMware Player. The first thing we need to do is find a location to store the Kali VM files. We downloaded a single 7-zip archive whose contents must be extracted to our local hard drive. For this demo, I'm choosing the default location used by VMware for virtual machine files under Documents, My Documents, Virtual Machines. I moved the archive file from the Downloads folder to the Virtual Machines folder and extracted it using the 7-zip Extract Here context menu item. The VM archive contains 11 gigabytes of files and takes a while to extract to the Kali VM folder that you see here. Now let's start at VMware Player and install the Kali Linux virtual machine image. Click on the Open a Virtual Machine link. Navigate to the Kali Linux VM folder. Click on the VMX file and select Open. Notice that the Kali Linux VM is now in the VM library listing. Now click the Play Virtual Machine button. Click the OK button on the message boxes warning about performance and incompatibilities and dismiss any message balloons that appear. In the Moved or Copied message box, click on the I Copied It button. This will generate new MAC addresses for all of the network interfaces present in the Kali VM. You will only need to do this the first time you start up the Kali VM. Now we see the selections for multi-user boot mode and recovery mode. If you do not click on the boot menu within 5 seconds, the default selection for multi-user boot will be automatically chosen, which is the selection we want. Recovery mode is only needed if Kali is having problems booting, and you need a minimal startup and shell for running tools and fixing problems. You might have noticed that there wasn't an option to start in forensics mode when booting from the VM. This is because the VM runs from the virtual hard disk, which must be writable. Forensics mode only makes sense when booting from the Kali Live DVD and you don't want storage devices on the computer to be automatically mounted and writable. If you want to mount storage devices as read-only after the Kali VM is started, you will use the mount command to do so. More on that in the module on disk imaging. We waited a short time for Kali to boot and there's the login prompt. 
There are no user accounts installed in the Kali VM, so we must log into the root account by clicking Other. Entering the username root and entering in the default password tor, T-O-O-R, which is root backwards. And we wait for the Kali desktop environment to load. Notice the banner at the bottom warning that VMware Tools is not up to date. Just click the Remind Me Later button for now and I will show you how to update VMware Tools in another demo. Over here is the Kali system menu. This is where you can log out of Kali, shut down Kali, and do a few other things as well. Now let's take a look at the settings for the Kali VM. You find them under Player, Manage, Virtual Machine Settings, or you can just hit Control D. For the Kali VM we see 2 GB of RAM and a maximum of 30 GB of disk space is allocated. You can change these settings, but only with Kali shut down and the VM powered off. Just for playing around with Kali Linux, these settings are just fine. If you are running the Kali VM in VMware Workstation, you cannot change the virtual disk size if you have already created snapshots. So making necessary adjustments in disk space should be the first thing you do with any new VM. One other configuration to note is the network adapter. These settings determine how the guest VM is connected to the network. The default is NAT, Network Address Translation, which allows VMware Player and Kali to share the IP address and network connection of the host operating system. This should be sufficient to connect Kali to the Internet, assuming the computer VMware Player is running on has Internet access, of course. An easy way to check if Kali can get to the Internet is to start Kali's default web browser, IceWeasel, and try navigating to Pluralsight.com. And it looks like we're good to go to start applying updates to our Kali Linux virtual machine. In this demo, we saw how to install the VMware virtual machine distribution of Kali Linux into VMware Player, start the Kali VM, log into and out of Kali, and shut down the Kali VM. We also checked if Kali was connected to the Internet. 